Hello everybody, I'm Andy Phillips and this is Iron Concepts number 56. We've talked a lot about design over the last few months, and it's a subject that I think is on a lot of people's minds too. And right now there's really a high demand for designers in the job market, and designers are being used to fix problems like never before across the board on everything from sales teams for big businesses to the DOT engineering teams are using designers to sort of plug the holes as they go. And it's not just good enough anymore to make everything function and to make it all work together, but it has to look like it works together. It has to look beautiful as it goes. And these designers are making our world more beautiful, like never before. They're rounding off the sharp edges that used to make life so abrasive. In this, though, people are experiencing the benefits of good design all the time. But they don't necessarily understand good design any better than they did before. But that said, just because they don't understand it doesn't mean they don't expect it from you. And whether or not you mean to, you're most likely ramping up your design sense to match that demand. There are a lot of things that a smith could have gotten away with 10 years ago that would never fly now. I mean, you can still make it big, paint it red, and call it art, but you can't make it crooked, paint it a conflict in color, and then call it handmade and still get away with it, you know? And this new thing, this thing that's happening, it's just the nature of the market. It's made you more sophisticated, more cultured, and it's made your work more design-oriented. Now that you have these new superpowers, though, superpowers that you didn't even know you had developed, we need to make sure that it isn't overlooked and that you don't sell yourself short. Now, you may not think this is an easy task, but really it is. All that you have to do to achieve this is the same thing that's required of any good marketing person, and that's to remove your humility, your modesty, and turn up your own awesome. Now, I'm not saying inflate what you can do. Not, not really at all. Rather, what I'm saying is make sure you openly advertise everything that you're doing. This includes your design philosophy, how you iterate design, and who you draw inspiration from. You need to put this information out there and celebrate your designs in iron for the skilled, inspired designs that they are. And this is where the illusion of good design comes in. I've said this before. But in design, there are no right answers. And sometimes, even the best answer isn't the right answer for everyone. Fashion aside, this is why Wayfair can't make truly custom furniture. You can't make one design that fits absolutely everybody. That's why there need to be more people out there, so that you can connect with them, so that you can feel what they feel. Thus, when people look for good designers, they, of course, will kind of look through their former works, the former things that they've designed, not unlike the way that a client will come into your shop and look through your portfolio to see the things in iron that you've built. The customer will look for good, clean, finished designs. They'll want to know that the designer is capable of achieving that. But also, what is very important is the evidence of the design path, how that designer got from point A to point B. People love to see progression. And, I mean, when a designer walks up to a blank canvas and they put down the perfect solution with the first stroke, that's great. But it's a hard narrative to sell. You have to show a customer that there is a path, that it's not all something that's just happened in your past that allows you to execute this one beautiful thing right now, that you can't size them up in a matter of seconds because nobody wants that. You need to display your napkin sketches, your concept drawings, and your work-in-progress photos that all allude to the finished piece, and that'll let them know that there's a journey to be had here and that they can go along with it. People want to go on that journey with you. Tell the story of how some of your greatest designs came to life, and you know what? Even if those designs aren't so great, it'll still come across as a good design. That narrative gives you the illusion of good design. And the illusion of good design, in the end, really is good design. 
But that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed the drawing. I've had a few people ask me about the software that I use for drawing. It's nothing complicated and it's definitely free. Uh, it's a software called GIMP. It's, you can download it right now just from, uh, I think it's GIMP.org. I'll do some more in detailed like videos of the tools that I actually use because I draw all the time. I probably do at this point, maybe 30 or 40 drawings a week. Um, for different clients, including Oak Hill Ironworks sometimes, as well as, you know, just, just for Iron Concepts, of course, too, just for fun. Now, if you're watching this on the Big Blue channel, make sure to hop in the description below. There's actually a link down there over to the Iron Concepts channel, because here in the next few episodes, we're not going to be posting these up to Blue's channel anymore. We're going to go ahead and clean everything up, separate the two, and have two separate channels. Make sure to head over there and subscribe. If you have any thoughts, too, on this video, please leave a comment. And if there are any topics you want us to delve into in the future, my email is in the description below. So until next time, really, that's it. Thanks, and uh, 